week, worst week. So let's bring in my big three panel. Politics staff writer for Roll Call, Shira Tuplitz. Republican strategist and MSNBC contributor Susan Del Percio and Democratic strategist Morris Reed, who found his way back from gay Paris. <laughs> we were so jealous of you last week, but anyway, let's get to you first, Shira, with a welcome. Um, our first topic is the first debate, or rather the final debate on Monday. What are both campaigns saying about it, and what do you expect to see? Well, obviously, this debate focuses on foreign policy, and that's notable because Mitt Romney doesn't really have a long record or a close to a non-existent record in foreign policy at all. He was governor for four years, didn't really deal with the issue a lot then, and then obviously his trip to London didn't go so well this summer. So the question is, does that mean going into Monday that in the expectations game, are expectations low enough that he can just do all right and receive a passing grade? That's what I'm going to be watching for Monday night. Okay, sort of gauging that. Susan, uh, Mitt Romney did have some missteps in the last go round addressing the Libya situation. How do you think he's going to handle Libya on Monday? I mean, can he make up for the trouble that he had with it in the last debate, or is it one of those things you just leave it be? No, I think he will handle it and, and make up the ground. I think the more important thing is the body language we're going to see when it comes to Libya, mm -hmm. as well as a lot of other things. And your previous guest was talking about civility. I think the last debate turned off a lot of people, especially women, and now we're going to have to see how they confront each other and see if they go over that line. You know, Reid, the president was certainly criticized for his performance in the first debate. I mean, he made fun of himself as well. But mm -hmm. a new Gallup poll says that 51% of Americans think President Obama won the second debate. So what kind of balance does the president need to strike in this final one? And how do you expect him to handle the Libya issue? Well, I think that this is an, an, uh, an area where the president always has an upper hand on the challenger because you really don't have uh, experience when you're not the president or come from the, uh, the Senate. Uh, I believe that the president needs to show a lot of strength and leadership. He needs to really focus uh, and drill down. Uh, I think that this is an opportunity for him to show real presidential strength. We, you saw in the last debate when he really talked about foreign policy, things that he's committed to, he came off very, very strong. I think this is an opportunity for him to really drill down on the strength, uh, his leadership capability and the fact that he has some successes. He doesn't want to start spiking the football. Democrats shouldn't spike the football after the last debate. There's a lot of campaign left, so he needs to be very focused and very deliberate on what he's done successfully. Hmm. Hey, Sheer, let's move on to the next uh, topic with you. As we talk about Senate in the balance, there are some fierce battles in some key battleground states. Let's take a listen to the debate this week in Ohio between Senator Sherrod Brown and his GOP challenger. He's way more interested in his next job than he is doing his job for the people of Ohio. And Josh Mandel is an elected official, has fall, fallen far short on the honesty and integrity quotient. I take personal offense to that, uh, and you're dead wrong. It's why the Cleveland Plain Dealer called your attacks on me false, deceiving, dishonest, incorrect, quote unquote, lie of the year. Senator, you are a liar. Okay, so Shira, you're right there in Ohio. You've been covering the Rust Belt on Roll Call's special website, The Road Trip 2012. So give me a sense of the Senate race there. What, how are you reading things? Well, it's interesting because despite what you just heard there, a lot of what, what the result of the Senate race is going to rely heavily on the presidential contest. Uh, the conventional wisdom is that uh, uh, Romney needs to win Ohio for Mandel to pull out a victory. And from my experience talking to people on the road here, I think that's the case. But going back to the debate, I mean, these, to say these two men dislike each other is a gross understatement. You could really feel the palpable hate between them. And uh, that's why Josh Mandel on the trail yesterday was talking about the debate. He was saying that Sherrod Brown, Senator Brown, uh, was acting like a child. And also Sherrod Brown supporters right before the debate were chanting, liar, liar, across the street mm -hmm. to Mandel supporters. This is a very nasty campaign. Yeah. Can I ask you also just about the Ohio race in general, the presidential race? I mean, the last two months Absolutely. have put the, the race at an eight-point lead for Barack Obama. Uh, you know, it's been 51 to 43 percent, and that did not change. Do you sense the ground game there for Barack Obama? I mean, what you're feeling, because you're there. Do you, do you feel that he has the upper hand? Uh, yes, in terms of things like the number of campaign offices and staffers on the ground, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, you know, you can't drive through one of these small uh, Ohio towns like Canton, like we did a couple of days ago, and see an Ohio camp, uh, an Obama campaign.
campaign office. They're really just everywhere here. And then also the early vote operation. Mm -hmm. I mean, President Obama's had four years to prepare for this. It wasn't going to be a big surprise that Ohio was a battleground state. And that's exactly what they've done. They've prepared for this for many, many years. Okay. Um, Reed, what about the close Senate race in Virginia there between former Republican Senator George Allen and former Democratic Governor Tim Kaine? Here's part of their debate. Here it is. People really do want to see change in Washington, and that's where Tim Kaine and I differ. I want to be Virginia senator. Tim wants to be President Obama's senator. This is a huge difference between the two of us. I do not think it is anti-Virginian to support the President of the United States. I do not think it is anti-Virginian to support the Commander-in-Chief. How concerned are Democrats about holding on to this Senate seat, Reid? Well, they're very concerned. It really is a, a mix of being uh, new Virginia with Tim Kaine and the, 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 the out, so outlining suburbs around Washington, D.C., and the strength uh, and the growth that are there, and the old uh, Virginia that uh, Allen, Senator, former Senator Allen, former Governor Allen, embraces. So it's uh, critical uh, for them to hold on to the seat from a Senate standpoint. It's not an absolute must uh, for President Obama to get to 270 to hold on to Virginia, but uh, Harry Reid would like to keep this in his column. Tim Kaine really represents what I consider the new Virginia. Virginia, where it's growth, prosperity, a lot of folks that uh, really more are Washingtonians than Virginians, uh, mm -hmm. Virginians, so you'll see that uh, play out uh, yeah. heavily in this election. Yeah, I'm going to drink a little more coffee because I've called you Reed twice, now you can call me Wit, <laughs> just, I'm just saying. Okay, um, Susan, there's also the Senate race there in Missouri between Senator Claire McCaskill and Congressman Todd Aiken. Let's listen to that. Claire McCaskill was the first to endorse Barack Obama, and she was his strong right hand passing legislation, voting with him 98% of the time. He supports the boss being able to decide whether or not you get paid less just because you're a woman. And if you look at Congressman Aiken's office, in fact, he is the boss that does that. Susan, Senator McCaskill continues to lead in the polls. Does Todd Aiken have a chance there in Missouri? Um, he, he very well may, which is unfortunate, because as much as I want to see the Senate turn Republican, I don't think you do it at the expense of having someone of his character elected to the Senate. So I actually hope that Claire McCaskill keeps her seat. Okay, that's interesting. I want to have you this guys This is why tight. Susan is a great American first <laughs> and not a re Every Republican should hire this woman. She's a good well, listen, a moderation is usually the key, I think, in getting things done. But anyway, in a moment, we're going to rate the week, everyone. The best and the worst, so stick around for more of the Big Three.